Men are trash. I was browsing through my Twitter feed. It's 2014 and I see a Muslim sister of mine say those very words. And it might have been something that was building up in me for months and months before that. But when I read those words, it was a final signal to me that something had to change. I'd been spending time on Twitter as a way of socializing because I had no friends in my local area, especially on my wavelength. But what I got instead of close friends and good brothers was the input and influence of some people that made me question my very own values. And when I kept seeing these sisters downplay the things that I was raised to believe are right and normal and part of our Islamic culture, it kind of shocked me. And it made me think eventually that if I can't defend these points, either I'm wrong or I just need to learn how to express myself better. So I decided to go to the lab. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Amin. I'm actually a business guy and a coach, but I wrote a book on Islamic masculinity. That book has gone on to sell hundreds of copies and people have messaged me saying how much it's changed their lives, alhamdulillah. And this is a story of why I did it and how I did it. So those subtle messages that I kept seeing caused me to want to dive deeper and really go to my deep instincts and my cultural norms and values and ask myself, is this truly correct? Is this truly from Islam? The way I think about how men should be and how women should be. Is this correct? Or is this something that I've got from somewhere other than Islam and it's just wrong? I went deep. I was feeling like I'm right. I'm in the right position, but I should be able to bring proofs for this. And I knew a lot of people were suffering with this as well, where they couldn't justify from an Islamic perspective, the correct objective perspective. They couldn't justify why feminism was wrong, for example, or why the traditional Islamic view on gender relations or gender roles was correct. So I went to search this out. I decided that I would do a research project for my own benefit and to be able to share this with others. And I might as well turn it into a book because if it's a book, it's something public, it has to be of a good standard. And so this book was a way of forcing myself to start a project in this area of Muslim masculinity. And I thought something else would come after it. And the book was just a way of forcing myself to do the research and do it to a high level and a high standard. Alhamdulillah, I did that. And it all started with that idea of justifying and finding out what is the true role of a Muslim man according to Islam, not according to what men have been like in the past or what Rollo Tomasi says or what Andrew Tate says, but really, really from the right sources and without being biased and trying to just confirm what I already believe. And to be honest with you, I was shocked at how much my mind changed when I did this research. I initially went thinking that I'm going to go to the original sources, the tafsir, the Quran, the hadith, and the explanations of the hadith and the ideas and opinions of the scholars of the past. And also I would mix in some of the great books I've read on masculinity, like The Way of the Superior Man by David Dade. However, what I ended up doing is only going with the Quran and Hadith pretty much. It was enough and it was very pure and unfiltered and it didn't have these foreign ideologies mixed in with it and different agendas and different just personal opinions. And so I tried to make it a pure book and I tried to make it not something just from my opinion. I'm not going to lie, it softened some of my views towards how things should be. It made me a little bit more flexible. But with other areas where I was already quite confident, it made me way more confident. And I'm able to say now that if you're wondering about how you should be as a Muslim man, what your role is, not how do we beat feminism and how do we blame everything on women, not that stuff, but how should you be as a good Muslim man? This is the book for you. So how did I go about it? I just started researching by watching different lectures online. A lot of it I was trying to search in Arabic. A lot of the good materials are in Arabic where there isn't so much of a cultural bias. A lot of the stuff is coming from cultures that haven't been corrupted by foreign ideologies as much as others. So that was kind of the reason why I leaned towards it. But also there's just a lot of material in Arabic. So I was looking at lectures. I was looking at different uh, Friday prayer khutbas. I was looking at the Quran itself. What are the different ayat that mention men or mention strength and these kind of key words. So I was literally going through the Quran, searching for keywords and listing down all the ayat that came up. Then I would go to the tafsir, the explanation or exegesis of the Quran. And I would look at Ibn Kathir, I would look at Tabari, I would look at Sa'di, I would look at these three to five different tafsir and just see, is there anything here where they're commenting on how this ayah relates to how a man should be? A lot of the time there wasn't specific mention of that, but sometimes in the modern khutbas and lectures and videos I found online, there was more of that commentary. So I took from all of these acceptable sources, alhamdulillah. Then I went to Fath al-Bari, which is the commentary of Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, on 
Sahih Bukhari. And so I didn't want to just take the hadith and say, oh yeah, it means this. No, I wanted to take what does he say it means. And when I took all of this stuff together, I started to compile it into different categories and different characteristics of a good Muslim man. I was not specifically looking for what makes a man a man, right? I could say a man is power hungry. But this is not something that Allah has praised. So I didn't want to make a book and say, yeah, men are like this. No, we know how men are. In history, we can look and see how men were. But I want to know, how does Allah want us to be? That's way more important. That's more instructive. And I use specifically to categorize all this stuff, Ryan Holiday's system. So if you're looking at writing a book, which is a nonfiction, self-help kind of book, then go and search on YouTube, Ryan Holiday, how to write a book, and you'll find his system of categorizing notes. So I used that, but I did a digital version on a software called Trello, which is a project management software, really. It's not made for books, but it works. And it did a good job and it helped me really to create a structure. And so I had all my notes. After I had all my notes, all the different quotes and what are the ideas I wanna bring out from this quote? What does this quote prove? And I made sure to include a lot of stories as well. Stories are very interesting. Any good self-help book will have a lot of stories. And I specifically wanted it not to be an Islamic Sharia kind of scientific book in terms of very academic. I wanted it to be more like a self-help book. And actually, if I was to go back and do it again today, I would make it even more casual than it already is. I would do a lot more research on what are the issues that young men are facing today and really make it more aligned. But I still did that to a level. So I think it's good, especially the introduction. It makes you feel like, yes, I understand where you're coming from and I'm here to set the record straight for you. So what you'll find in the book is a lot of things talking about confidence, talking about marriage, talking about making money and strength and all these things that men wonder about in terms of their position in society. So once I had all the research and quotes, I just started writing, started writing paragraph. Every quote or story would have a few paragraphs and I just went like that, characteristic by characteristic. And I just did three sections. One was about the self. How do you work on yourself? The second was how do you interact with your family as a Muslim man? And the third was how do you interact with the wider community and the Ummah as a Muslim man? And what are the characteristics that are relevant for these three stages? Because I do believe you need a certain level of focusing on yourself, developing yourself before you can then go and impact your family and then impact the wider society. For example, if you don't even pray, how can you then go and tell your family to pray and make sure your kids are praying? It doesn't make sense. There's always a level of gradualism that we have to have, and that's how I structured the book. And one thing that I found very interesting is the Prophet ﷺ, in his interactions with women especially, he was quite easygoing. And that is a really the key word I would use for him in terms of his interactions with people. When they made mistakes, whether it's children or women or different companions of his, he was easygoing. He didn't shout. He wasn't controlling. What he did was he developed close relationships with people. People respected him. They looked up to him. They craved his love and his attention and his validation. And so when he would request something, they would want to fulfill that request. He didn't need to persuade them or convince them or push them or control them. They just wanted to do it. So that was a big thing I took from it. And it made me feel like, yeah, maybe my approach is not as easygoing as it could be. Maybe I should be more forbearing, forgiving. Also, I think the most amazing thing about the book is all the stories I was able to bring, alhamdulillah, and they're very inspiring. And I would say the number one thing this book will do for you is inspire you to be someone with character, with principles, and to really recognize that being a man is not about money. It's not about having women, four wives, three wives. It's not about these dunyawi things. It's about the character and the principles you carry and how much you're willing to sacrifice and stay strong on your principles. That's why one of the brothers that read the book he was being pressured by his in-laws to buy a house with a mortgage. And he read this book and it helped him to get that backbone and get that strong character and say, these are my principles. I will not take a mortgage and I will say no to you. I'll say yes to Allah and no to you. And that's how it's going to be. That's the kind of output you can expect from this book. But it's going to motivate you. It's going to inspire you to be a man of character, of principles, who lives by your principles. And you're also going to realize how money doesn't matter too much. Women doesn't matter too much. These things that people often focus on when it comes to being a man, it doesn't matter. What matters is not the money, but the hard work. Not the women, but being a man of character that's respect worthy. And ultimately, everything should go back to Allah. That if Allah commanded you to do this, or if Allah is pleased with this, that is your principles. That's where you should be going. That's the direction. Of course, there is that whole productivity element of how you even write a book. Like even my book is not too long. It's like 120 pages. It's not very long. But it was a lot of work, especially for someone like me who is not a writer. I'm better on camera, I'm better on a podcast or audio, but writing is pretty tough for me. So how did I do it? I committed to it. That was the first thing I did. I said, I'm going to do this. 
And I set myself a sharp deadline. I said, I'm going to do it in six months. So even though it didn't take six months, it took 12 months, which is still way quicker than it could have taken. I think if you know anyone who's written a book, it will always take longer than they hope, but usually it'll take longer than a year. And alhamdulillah, I was able to do it in a year. And I gave it a priority. I made it a priority in my life. Every quarter, I would have something called a rock, which is a goal, which is a three month kind of project that I focus and prioritize. And so that was often my priority for a couple of quarters, at least six months. I was like, I need to bang this out. I need to spend at least two, three hours a week on this every single week. Part of how I did it as well was my business partners. I set up an accountability meeting with them every week where we would just make sure we're there on time at a certain time every week and we would work for an hour. So we would have our cameras on and stuff like that and we'd be just in silence working. And that was something that would guarantee that if nothing else, if I did no other work on the book that week, at least for those couple hours, I would be doing work on the book. And what that also did is unlock me to feel like, yeah, this is not intimidating. I can just go and work on the book, writing a few paragraphs. It's not hard. Once you get in the flow, it's not that hard. It was really that accountability that I gave myself. It was the prioritization and focus that I gave it. And it was the tofu from Allah that allowed it to happen. Now, of course, I must thank the crowdfunding supporters because I did a crowdfunding campaign for this. I knew it was going to require money to print the books, to do the design, the cover and all of that. And also as a marketing thing to get the word out there, I created a launch good crowdfunding campaign. And Alhamdulillah, Bifadlillah, I raised like £3,000 from that. And I spent that only on the book. I made sure that I wasn't saying it as a, it's a charity thing. I didn't want to set it up as a charity thing. I was like, this is a book. If you want the book, if you like the project, then give money and I'm going to send you copies. So I did that and alhamdulillah from my own network and from other people even. I did it in Ramadan to make sure that we get the most impact as possible. And alhamdulillah, we raised the £3,000, which I ended up using fully. And it was so freeing to just have a budget for something like this. So when it came to the book design, the cover of it, I was able to get someone to do it. When it came to editing, a lot of people skimp out on editing. I paid £800 for editing to make the writing better because I know I'm not an amazing writer. And so I need to pay to solve that problem. So I spent £800 on that. I think the book cover was like £200. And so I got it done to a good level. I knew it was important to have the right name, the right cover for it to look good. I ended up with The Shepherd's Way and the subtitle was all the things that a Muslim man is interested in and focused on, like the money, the respect, the wives. So I made sure that was in the title and the design, I wanted it to stand out and to be modern looking. I didn't want it to look like a, an old school book or a traditional book. I wanted to have a fresh vibe, like a modern thing. This is a nonfiction book. It's not an academic Islamic book, it's a non-fiction book. So that was something I specifically chose to do. So I did the crowdfunding campaign and that also put pressure on me to finish the book in a good amount of time. And I think I was vaguely saying that it would take six months. It took a year, alhamdulillah. But ultimately the book got out and hundreds of people have now got the book. They've been through the book. They benefited from the book, alhamdulillah. I created an audio book as well. And from this book actually sprouted the idea of the front row which is my closed private community of Muslim men who are ambitious, who are working for something, who want to have principles. They want the best in the dunya and the akhirah, and they're willing to work for it. So that actually came out of this book. And that's what I was looking for, subhanAllah, is that I thought, if I do the research on masculinity, this is a research project. It's not a project in and of itself. Yes, a book will come from it. People will benefit from the book. But I know, especially young Muslim men, they're not big readers. So I knew this wouldn't be the end goal. And I didn't know what the end goal was. But I put in the work to write the book, release the book, and then naturally, about a year later, the idea for the front row came out. And so now, alhamdulillah, that is a project that I see as my vision, my goal in life. My contribution is the front row that came out of this book. So yeah, alhamdulillah, it all started with that sister saying men are trash and me getting a bit offended and then wanting to be able to defend myself and kind of justify my worldview when it came to gender roles. And that turned into this book that inshallah now can go and be put into your hands. You can read it and you can be confident of what your role is. What are the boundaries that are too extreme on either side? And to feel confident in how you feel as a man naturally and to know what Allah wants from you as a man as well. It's very balanced in terms of it's not red pill, it's not feminist. It's really, I would say, from the Quran and Sunnah. I also got a sheikh to go through it to just make sure there's nothing I've said which is against the Quran and Sunnah. Some of the things in there, of course, are kind of my opinion or my interpretation, but none of it is directly opposing any hadith or ayah. That's the main thing that's important. It has that full Islamic flavor, alhamdulillah, and I want you to benefit from it. So it's available for free. You just pay for the shipping and I'll send it over to you. If you're not in the UK, then we'll send you the audiobook version. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy for people to just benefit from that.
Alhamdulillah. So the main takeaways from writing a book is have a reason behind it, be fueled by something, put focus and prioritization on it, get some accountability to make sure you do it, and then put in the work and see how Allah uses you for the next steps because you don't always know what's coming and what can come from it. But if you start in a direction, then it often ends up in good places if you have a good intention. Also, always do a project with someone in mind, someone specific that you want to help and think about what do they need and how can I solve their problems. And that is how I wrote the book, thinking of these people in mind that I'm writing it for. So The Shepherd's Way is available. The link is in the description. And if you're interested in these topics of how to navigate the world of being a Muslim man, whether it's with your wealth, your health, your relationship with your wife or with Allah, with your future wife or finding a wife, any of these things that we grapple with and we wonder, are we right? Are we right to think that way? Are we right to expect these things? All of this is covered on this channel. If you want to subscribe, it's a good place to be. And with that, I'll see you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.